Hello students, welcome to my channel Engineers Academy. Kindly subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet. Now I am going to solve this problem. Uh, so in this problem it is said that the three forces act perpendicular to the rectangular plate is shown. And it is said that determine the moments M1 of F1, F M2 of F2 and M3 of F3 are about the point O, right? So we have to determine the moments of F1, F2 and F3 about this point O. So to find these moments, we will use uh, two approaches, right? So one is the vector approach and the other one is the scalar approach for finding the moment of all these three forces, right? So let's say first we use the vector approach, right? So the vector method. So to find M1, M1 is the moment of F1 about point O. Right, so we can write that using the vector method, so that will be R cross F1. And let's say the moment arm for F1 is also R1, right. So then we have to find the vectors of R1 and F1. We have to write R, find R1 uh, Cartesian vector and F1 Cartesian vector, right. So now as we can see that this F is acting in the negative x direction and its magnitude is F1. So we can write F1 vector f1 vector will be equal to f1 magnitude and it is acting in the negative i direction right so this is that f1 cartesian vector and similarly we need to define the moment arm for this f1 right so moment arm is a vector from the axis of rotation from the point where we want to determine the moment to the line of action of the given force right so this is that r1 so now as we can see that this R1 is only acting in the positive z direction, right? So we can say that this is and the length is C, right? So we can write that this is CK, right? So this is that R1 vector that is the moment arm. We can also find this R1 vector by identifying the coordinates of uh, this point, right? Let's say that the coordinates of this point are uh, since this point is located uh, on the z-axis, right, so it will have only one coordinate that is along z, we need to travel c distance along the z-axis, right, and the x and y coordinates of this point are 0. And similarly, this is origin, right. So to find this vector, we have to subtract the coordinates of this origin from this particular point, right. So 0 minus 0, uh, i 0 minus 0, j and c minus 0 k right so we have that uh, r1 position vector that is the moment arm right so we can write this is r1 r1 is c k vector cross f1 which is minus f1 i and then we have to remember this right so this is i cross j cross k So in this direction i cross j will give us k and k cross i will give us uh, plus j and in the opposite direction i cross k will give us minus j and so on, right. So now we can write that m1 vector moment about uh, that point O of the force f1. So this is c into minus, so we can write minus c f1 and k cross i is j, right, so this is j. So this is M1, right? So as we can see that this force F1 is producing the moment about the y-axis, right? We can, by inspection, we can say that this F1 is producing the moment about y-axis if we look into this F1 force from this direction, right? And if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction, so our thumb will point out in this direction, that is in the negative y direction, that is in the negative z direction, right? So this cross product gives us negative c f1 j right so this means that the m1 magnitude is c f1 and its direction is clockwise right this is clockwise so clockwise moment is always negative so this is that m1 vector now we can find uh, this m1 by using the scalar approach as well right scalar method so again to find the moment of this F1 about point O, we will observe this uh, F1 force from all these three axes. 
so first we will observe this force from this direction right so now as we can see that this f1 force is parallel to the x axis is so it is not going to produce the moment about this x axis is right so this means that we can write that the m1 moment due to this force f1 this f1 is not going to produce the moment about the x axis is right so this means that the x component of this m1 is zero right so we can say that m let me write that this is m1 x i plus m1 y j plus m1 z a m1 x m1 y and m1 z are the components of the m1 that is the moment of f1 about that point o right so these are the components of that m1 moment due to that force f1 right so from our observation we can say that f1 is not going to produce the moment about that x axis so we can say that m1 x component is zero similarly if we observe this f1 force from this direction so we can observe that we can inspect that this f1 is producing the moment about the y axis is in this direction right and its magnitude will be f1 times the perpendicular distance so the perpendicular distance is c so this is c f1 so we can write that m1 y will be equal to its magnitude will be c f1 and for direction we have to curl our our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out will give us the direction of that m1 y component right so as we can see if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the negative j direction right so this means that this m1 y component is acting in the negative j direction similarly if we observe this f1 force from this direction that is along the z axis is so as we can see that this f1 is intersecting with the z axis is so in other words we can say that the perpendicular distance of f1 from the z axis is, is zero so that means that this f1 is not going to produce the moment about the z axis is right so you people need to remember that whenever a given force is intersecting with an axis is uh, so that force f1 will not produce the moment about that particular uh, axis is with which it is intersecting right so we can say that m1 z of this force f1 is also zero right so now we can put all these components magnitude in this m1 vector right so m1 vector is equal to 0 i minus c f1 j and 0 k so if we only write this component so this is minus c f1 j so we get that same uh, m1 moment by using the scalar approach as well right so you people need to remember that this scalar approach is uh, will not always work for you people since uh, if if these forces are making some angles uh, some angles with the positive z uh, with the x axis with the y axis or with the z axis right so then you people will not be able to apply this scalar method right then we then we will have to find the components of that f1 and then we have to observe all those components of these forces right and this vector method will always uh, you people will find this vector method easy to determine the moments of a given vector for for any given vector right but you people have to need to know both the methods right now we have to determine the uh, m2 moment right so let me write that m2 m2 is the moment of this f2 about that point o right so this is m2 vector and this will be again r cross f2 so for f2 again we have to define the moment arm vector right so this is let's say this is r2 so r2 cross f2 so let's say that this is our r2 that is from the axis of rotation from the point of rotation to the line of action of this given force f2 right so this is r2 moment arm right so again we have to write uh, f2 and r2 as a cartesian vector right so r2 so for r2 we have to write the coordinates of this particular point right this point so to reach this point from that origin we have to travel b distance along the y axis right so b and then along the positive z we have to travel this c 
and since this point is in the yz plane, so there is no need to travel along the x axis, right. So, these are the coordinates of this uh, point, right. Let us say that this point is uh, 2, let us say, right. So, we can find that r2 vector by subtracting the coordinates of this point O from the coordinates of this point 2, right. So, this will be 0 minus 0 i plus b minus 0 j and c minus 0 k, right. So, this is this is that r 2 vector, right. Similarly, we can write that f 2 vector. So, f 2 vector, so as we can see that this f 2 is acting in the positive x direction that is parallel to the positive x axis. So, we can write that this is f 2 i, right. So, now we can write this is m 2 and we can find this by using the determinant method, right. So, let me write that m 2 will be equal to i j and k and then we have to write the components of r 2. So, 0, this is 0 b and c and then the components of f 2, right. So, this is f 2, 0 and 0, right. So, we can apply the determinant method. So, this is 0. So, this means that this is 0 i and then minus j and this is 0 minus c f. This is f 2, right. So, minus c f 2 and then this is plus k and this is 0 and this is minus b f 2, minus b f right. So, this is 0 i plus c f 2 j and this is minus b f 2 k, right. So, we can determine this by again using that scalar approach, right. So, let me find, let me apply that scalar method for this f 2 as well, right. So, let us say that m 2 vector is equal to m 2 x i plus m 2 y j plus m 2 z k, right. So, now again we have to observe this f 2 force from all these 3 axes, right. So, if we observe this f 2 force from this direction that is along the x axis, right. So, as we can see that this f 2 is parallel to the x axis, right. So, it will not produce the moment about that uh, x axis, right. So, this means that m 2 x component is 0, right. Similarly, if we observe this f 2 force from this direction, so then uh, this f 2 is going to produce the moment about the y axis is in this direction like this, right. And if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction, so the thumb will point out in the positive j direction, right. And the magnitude will be f 2 times this perpendicular distance. So, the perpendicular distance is c. Right. So, we can write that m 2 y will be equal to c f 2 and since the thumb is pointing out in the positive y direction, so we can write that this is positive j, right. And similarly, we can find m 2 z if we observe this f 2 force from this direction like this. So, again we can see that this f 2 is going to produce the moment about the z axis is in this direction, right this f 2 is going to rotate this rectangular plate in this direction about the z axis, right. And if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction, so the thumb will point out in the negative z direction, right. And the magnitude of this m 2 z will be f 2 times this perpendicular distance and this perpendicular distance is b, right. So, we can write that this is b f 2 and since the thumb is pointing out in the negative z direction, so we can write that this is minus k. Right. So, we can write that this m 2 will be 0 i plus c f 2 j and this is minus b f 2 k, right. So, again we can see that we get that same uh, moment, right. So, this is again we can see that is c f 2 j. So, this means that about the y axis is this f 2 is producing the moment of magnitude c f 2 and the direction of that moment is counterclockwise, right, since this is plus j and here we have that minus k. 
now to find m3 again we can write m3 vector is equal to r3 cross f3 so now we have to define r3 so we can define r3 from here to here this will be our r3 right this is r3 vector and so first we have to write that f3 as a cartesian vector so f3 so again as we can see that this f3 is acting in the positive x direction and its magnitude is f3 so we will write that this is f3 i that is in the positive i direction and similarly this r3 vector is acting in the positive j direction right and if we write the coordinates of this particular points right so this point is uh, on the y axis is right so the x coordinate is 0 the y coordinate is b and the z coordinate is 0 right so we can write that this factor will be 0 minus 0 i and b minus 0 j right so this is b j and 0 minus 0 k right so this is that r3 vector so now we can write that this is b j plus f uh, cross product with f3 i right and again we have to draw that so this is b into f3 and j cross i so j cross i is minus k so we have to write minus k with it and again we can use that scalar method as well right so this m3 will be equal to uh, again m3 x i plus m3 yj plus m3 zk right so for that we have to observe this f3 force from x axis from y axis and from z axis right so now we if we have observed this f3 force from this x axis so again this f3 is parallel with that x axis so it is not going to produce the movement about that x axis right so we can say that m3 x magnitude is zero right Similarly, if we observe this F3 force from this direction, that is from the y axis, this M3y is not going to produce the moment about the y axis, it is intersecting with the y axis, right? And the perpendicular distance of this F3 force from this y axis is 0, right? So, so that M3y is 0. And again, if we observe this F3 force from this direction, so M3z. So as we can see that this F3 is going to rotate this rectangular plate about the z-axis in this direction. And if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction, so the thumb will point out in the negative z-direction that is in the negative k-direction. And the magnitude of this uh, M3 z is uh, 3 times b, right, since the perpendicular distance from the z-axis is, is b, right. So we can write that the magnitude is b F3 right and since the thumb is pointing out in the negative z direction so this means that the the direction is clockwise right let me write here as clockwise right so we can write that m3 vector so m3 x is 0 i m3 y is 0 j and m3 z magnitude is b f3 and since it's clockwise so this means that the clockwise so it is in the negative k direction right so we have to write that this is minus k so we can write that it is minus b f 3 k so we get that same m3 moment by using the scalar approach method as well right so i hope you people would have understood uh, these two methods how we determine the moment of a given force about a given point using these two methods